Welcome everyone to the launch of the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund Augmented Reality Spitfire app. I'm delighted that I'm to introduce today three very special people who are here with me at the historic Royal Air Force Club in London. Firstly, on my left, I've got Richard Howells and Tom Blockley. They're from, they're from a bronze um, software lab who have developed the app very generously for the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund. Bronze Software Lab is a relatively new, small company based in Shropshire, um, but despite their recent arrival on the tech scene, they've been scooping up awards left, right and centre, and deservedly so. Hopefully everyone who's seen the Spitfire app will agree, they're very likely to be going some new awards in the very near future. Um, I think though that they're particularly special because they have invested especially as such a small company, they've invested so much time, over 500 man hours involving the whole company in this charitable cause. Um, they're generously donating the app um, to the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund. Um, I think they're inspirational. Inspirational is a word that's bandaged around a lot, but I think they really are excellent role models for other companies, both big and small and new and old. So, on my right, I don't really know how to introduce this gentleman on my right, and I absolutely am sure that due to being very modest, he would hate the fact that I'm going to call him a hero, but I think he absolutely is a hero, and that's squadron leader Nigel Bay. Um, Nigel, he's 95 now, and he was at just 20 when he um, started flying Spitfires. He flew Spitfires during World War II, both here and in, in the Middle East as well. And he, very sadly, is one of the increasingly few surviving Spitfire pilots who flew actually during the Battle of Britain itself. So just a little bit then first about the app. I'm going to talk to um, Richard and to Tom about the app itself. And then I'm going to ask some questions um, of Nigel, who's just going to explain what it was like to fly the real thing. And then after that, I'm going to take some of your questions that you've sent in to ask to the team. Um, it's not too late. We've had tons already. It's not too late. If you've got a question that you've not yet sent in, please do so. The best way to do it is to tweet it using the hashtag um, Spitfire Challenge, and we'll endeavour, if we've got time, to ask it to, to one of the team here. So first of all, Richard, you're Managing Director of Royal Software Labs. Can you just tell us why you decided to create this app for the Royal Efforts Fund? Thanks very much, Rachel. Yeah, I think one of the things um, to sort of come clean really is that uh, we didn't really know much about the uh, RF Network Fund at all uh, until we actually started the project. Um, and uh, doing a little bit of research, we found that the, the fund actually spans uh, 94 years. So it's a 94 year old charity, um, obviously spanning um, multiple generations and also generations of innovation. So from our side, it made total sense when we we're trying to in introduce a new innovation in mobile technology that we've worked with the Benevolent Fund um, to release that technology. Um, also, personally, I think it's uh, really cool that people, whilst giving their donation, they get something really cool back. And uh, what could be better than actually carrying around your own personal Spitfire in your pocket? So I understand, I'm not very technological, I have to admit, but I understand that it's some quite special augmented reality technology that you're using in that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly. Um, the, as you say, the, the technology that's used within the application is called augmented reality. It's developed by our company, Abron Software Labs. Um, we think this technology really, over the next five years, represents a, uh, a new era in mobile application development. Um, as you'll see from downloading the app, that we've managed to create a, um, a completely fast, stable, an innovative environment that uses uh, technology from the very, very latest gaming um, technologies. Um, our technology works completely offline as well, so even uh, we have actually tested it in several bars uh, where there are no, uh, where there's no internet connection, and then we can still shoot at our friends. Um, we'd also like to think of the technology um, in a practical sense as 21st century storytelling. Um, it has some uh, great benefits to uh, keeping stories alive and uh, a, a certain element of gamification as well. Um, I, I guess it's safe to say that augmented reality within the next five years will become part of our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you. So, talking a little bit about the app itself, Tom, you're the chief designer of the app. Can you maybe tell us 
um, some of the special features that it has, perhaps how people can download it and how to actually use it once you've got it. Okay. We've got some really cool features within this, within this application. Um, we're really excited to present some of our latest technologies uh, using augmented reality. Um, we believe it's a new breed of AR app. And the RFPF are uh, a really innovative charity using the latest technology and probably one of the first in the world to create a 3D augmented reality application. Uh, while doing this app, we researched hundreds of photos and hours of video to develop a Spitfire that is as accurate as possible. Um, we even times the, the speed it takes for landing gear to go up. And what I want to do is just show you a quick video which will overview the application. Um, you can actually download the, the app by searching for REF Netherlands Fund Spitfire in the App Store. Um, if you have an iPhone 5 or newer, that's great. You can use it. Uh, if you've got an iPad 3 or newer, you can download it as well. You'll have to search for um, iPhone applications within the store. Our team is working tirelessly at the moment to, to optimize, to enhance our organ strategy technology to work on older devices as well. So um, keep a lookout for an update coming very soon that will uh, support iPad 2 and iPad, uh, iPhone 4S. So is the video running? There it is. If you restart the video. So, user experience to us is, is very key when we're um, building any augmented reality application. We don't just want to build any app. We want to build one that's um, used next generation of interactivity. We've inspired the navigation on the um, Spitfire's propeller. So as you spin, you can uh, see it turn. To view the experience, you can use um, some of the major currencies around the world, we've used five pound notes. You can touch on the uh, engine, you can hear sound, you can view the animation. You can actually pan around the Spitfire as well in beautiful reflections. So you can touch on the Spitfire and to replicate the Spitfire's agility, we want to get that sense of um, being able to turn it around. Even the landing gear has been timed to approximately five seconds, and that allows you to um, experience Spitfire's precision. We've got this hashtag called Spitfire Challenge. You can align it the crosshairs and take a photo, and then share that. It's what we're after is really iconic shots. So if you can go out to the pyramids, that would be really good. Uh, we've used sound and motion a lot with the app, and also we've got Nigel Rose who features heavily in the application from an audio point of view, it is a 14 second snippet. Thank you very much. So, turning to a real life Spitfire pilot then. Um, Nigel um, Rays, as I mentioned before, squadron leader Nigel Rays, 20, um, at the beginning of the, the Battle of Britain. Um, he was flying operationally at the Titan Battle, which was exactly 74 years ago this month. He'd already claimed uh, one left ship, one turned destroyed, to share another, got injured, and then claimed another left ship when O'Neill was turned destroyed. A really amazing, amazing um, record. Um, Nigel, I'm sure it's a question that you get asked all the time, but, but many pilots say the Spitfire was their favourite aircraft to fly, the great iconic. Why do you think that is? I think it's very easy to uh, to, to uh, pin this down to one major factor, and that, that is that it is a real major. It's uh, uh, beautifully, um, uh, it has most lovely habits and uh, beautifully behaved. And uh, I don't think anybody has done it. It's a sort of criticized adversely, it's good far. A number of people, of course, who uh, would uh, say that the hurricane uh, was uh, something uh, rather special. Um, and uh, most people who train both uh, hurricanes and uh, Spitfires, um, I think, would, uh, uh, in my estimation, would decide for the, um, um, <coughs> for the um, 
first, first bit of that is, which uh, has these, these very nice characteristics, which are uh, very difficult to put with your... Brilliant. Um, I understand that you personally, your first engagement with the enemy was just, your squadron come down from Scotland, is that right? So your first engagement with the enemy was three days after you got down to where the good point. That's right. How, how, what did that go like? It was a very strange feeling, because uh, uh, I personally had never seen a German aircraft, uh, uh, let alone a fighter plane, and uh, here was uh, a mass which my army officer swore afterwards uh, it was uh, in the region of 100 to 150 planes. And uh, so it was, it was pretty, pretty frightening sight to, to see this uh, enormous gaggle of a real sort of like a, a lot of uh, mosquitoes, you know, or, uh, not, not mosquitoes that you find in the world today, <laughs> yes. but, uh, uh, but uh, a lot of um, buzzbuzz and uh, you know, really uh, um, quite frightening fright, fright sights. And they were all heading towards us, towards the uh, south coast of uh, um, what we went to, to uh, the, uh, <coughs> the uh, Swarm, uh, which I, I couldn't really call, really call it a swarm, um, was uh, heading inland uh, after crossing the channel. And uh, our CEO uh, said, uh, or words to this effect, uh, uh, pick your uh, in there and uh, go for him. And uh, we picked our in there and, uh, and went for him, I suppose I could say. And, um, Certainly, it was uh, um, quite a sort of scary feeling to start with, but I think you one got used to it after a bit. That uh, um, you could see, see that uh, there was some limitation to the, 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 the particular in there that you selected, uh, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, the one I selected, uh, I met for Taylor and Charlie, um, and. Uh, I imagine that his gunner completely missed to one I know that is what it was, um, carried a gunner, and uh, he would have warned the pilot, I think, that there was something coming up on his tail. And uh, at, at that point, I opened fire, and uh, um, I was quite astonished to find that uh, I was getting a certain amount of white smoke out of the back of the thing. And, uh, in later life, uh, I, I realized that uh, this was no bad thing because uh, you'd got to get back across the channel, of course. And uh, if one had uh, burst his uh, coolant uh, tank, uh, and uh, you know, uh, he, he might be in a sore, awkward position to get back across the channel with a leaking coolant, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know, that would be really the worst thing that could happen to him, I suppose, he will. So uh, that was my first engagement with the uh, uh, German aircraft. Later on, of course, I learned that uh, the Germans reckoned that their messages were superior to the um, Spitfire and also to the Hurricane. But uh, this is argued uh, very strongly on both sides. And, uh, um, I think uh, I belong to a school which reckons that the uh, Spitfire was unbeatable and uh, it, uh, it really you were in the best position you could be if you were attacking um, a German plane uh, and uh, if you put your sights on. So as the indisputable Spitfire expert in the room, Roger, you've seen the app, the app that's raising money for the efforts for the front. And what do you think about it? How, how accurate do you think? Have the boys done a good job? Yes, I think they have. It's a wonderful job. It's certainly. And clearly, it's very different from the aircraft that you flew in the fence that got very harmless machine guns. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were rather um, sorry to, uh, to feel that the Germans had these cannon mounted. Uh, um, and whereas we uh, happened at that stage, yeah. I think uh, 
I'd learned afterwards that in fact a few Spitfires had got the cannon um, and uh, went out into battle and sort of uh, rather pleased that they had them. But uh, uh, later on, I think, they, they, when they, the number of stoppages that had occurred, uh, which unfortunately were fairly frequent, you see, if you were, knew you were being pursued uh, and you went into a steep turn, um, as you will know, it was, uh, as you went into a steep turn, you, you probably blacked out and uh, your vision would uh, disappear. And uh, so you, you may be putting yourself at a disadvantage at that stage. Yeah. And uh, um, that, of course, is, is a nice thing to happen. So um, just before I um, ask you a few more questions, I've just we've had quite a few inquiries in voice um, who are essentially asking, will the app be available on Android? Um, absolutely, yes. I think it, it's safe to say that our intention is to build it on Android as well. Um, what we're doing um, officially is we're looking at the um, uh, the Apple iOS deployment just to see how that goes. So if you have a uh, if you if you have friends, if you have an Android device and you have friends who are using Apple technology and you really want the app, then get them to go and download it. <laughs> so essentially you're saying the more people that buy the app on Apple, the more likelihood we have to them. That's right, yeah. Um, Nigel, unsurprisingly, we've got lots of questions for you, I hope you don't mind. Um, but the first one um, comes from uh, Barry P via uh, Facebook. He's obviously been doing quite a lot of research on you. Because his question is that he understands that before the Second World War, you were a trainee uh, quantity surveyor, and that after the war, you went back to that same profession. Right. He, he, his question is really around how did you adjust back to civilian life after such a, a career during the war? The Second World War left was difficult, really. Um, um, I suppose uh, there was a, a lack of. Uh, uh, fright from the, the, the lack of the, the aircraft, um, yeah. which uh, they naturally followed as, uh, as the Germans got weaker and weaker, and we got stronger and stronger. And uh, uh, I think our, our feeling of uh, uh, comparative strength was, was definitely getting more noticeable. Did you ever miss that? I mean, obviously, playing in horrendous situations, but did you ever miss a flying step there after the war? Um, ah, I've just been given a note. When did you last fly the step there? Well, on my 19th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was uh, June uh, the 21st, 1991. Um, Yes, uh, I, I, I uh, flew uh, in the dual uh, uh, two-seater. Two-seater, so yeah. I flew to Carolyn Grace. Oh, okay. Yes, and uh, uh, they let me fly there, which was very nice. Did it all come back? To, oh, yes. To, did it? Tried, you know, people say like riding bicycles. It's true. Yeah. It was uh, very much like riding a bicycle. Um, so I, I don't think. And it's a, it's a sense of shock, so they at all. Yeah. It's all flowed back. Yeah, I like that. I've got um, from um, a gentleman called Matthew Ward. Um, he's asking which was your favourite variant or type of set fire that you flew. Um, Obviously, they evolved, didn't they, during they the They did, war? yes. And uh, I can answer that one at once. The Spitfire like Mark V. Um, okay. That, that was uh, far and away. Superior model to my mind, and a lot of other people put my head agree with me on that. Why was it superior? Um, I think it was just in every way uh, controls every, a lot, uh, it just functioned extraordinarily well. And uh, of course, by then, the Prince had two cannons, uh, which was uh, a big advantage, uh, which we've been rather praying for, yeah. it be on, on a pile. With armament, because yeah. the the German misfits you know, used to fire uh, through the propeller boss, and uh, um, it, it, it definitely, in a 
bunch of work. Maybe we were just disappointed too. Um, I've got a slightly contentious, as talking just a bit about Alec, I've got a slightly contentious question from John M, also via Facebook. He's asking whether whether it's possible that it was a government policy to make Spitfire with a very romantic image, so every boy wanted to fly the Spitfire and everyone thought the Spitfire was the best aircraft, but actually that the Hurricane was superior. What's your, you sort of touched on it earlier, but what's your view of Spitfire versus Hurricane, without annoying any Hurricane pilots you need watching? Um, the usual answer to that is that the, uh, the Spitfire is uh, more maneuverable than the Hurricane. Um, it, 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 it was special. It, it, it was a, a preferable thing to be in, I think. So don't it. Um, but uh, this is a, it's a very personal thing, and, and uh, uh, a lot of people would disagree with me on this, I'm sure. They always say that, ah, oh, yes, but the hurricane would take far more punishment than a Spitfire. Um, the Spitfire was uh, a, a nice performer, and uh, um, but uh, it could uh, cost you a lot of um, trouble if, if, you, if you were being shot up by something. Yeah. And uh, I think there was something to say for that. Yeah. Well, um, Squadron News and Local Ways, it's been such an honour for us to have you here today. Thank you so much for travelling in from Ethics. It's been a real privilege. Yeah. Um, also, always thank you from the Royal Ethics Department. So thank you so much for what you're doing. It's an amazing thing. We're going to help so many people by, by this app being on sale. And I guess to everyone who's watching um, out there, whether when you think the app's amazing, whether you think this is a great cause, whether you think, which I think, that Nigel is the most amazing man ever. Um, please spread the word about the app because the only way it's going to raise money is if people know about it. I don't know about you, but personally, I think £1.49 is a very good price for the pleasure of harmlessly shooting machine guns at my friends in the pub. Um, please also, if you feel like it, um, take part in our, in our competition. The prize is a very amazing book called Stick by the One, which is signed by the British pilots like Nigel himself here. And to enter it, just use the hashtag Spitfire Challenge. As Tom mentioned earlier, the competition is get your Spitfire in the quirkiest place possible. So far, internally, we've been Royal Apples and Front, we've got it riding the racehorse, and we've got it by Beckham Palace, and I'm absolutely sure you can beat that. So thank you so much for watching um, us today. So thank you for attending the launch, and thank you for your support for the Royal Apples and Front. Bye.